Hey everybody, Editor Inspector plugins allow you to customize the Inspector tab of any node within the editor, and they're easier to make than you might think. To demonstrate what they're capable of, here's a plugin I made to customize the layout of a controller and save it to a JSON. Here's another dialog plugin I made that allows you to select dialog from the inspector and preview what your character is going to say. But for today, in order to demonstrate how to make inspector plugins, we're going to be creating a simple plugin that adds a property to the inspector tab of control nodes, which keeps the pivot offset centered while resizing. There are essentially three main steps to making an inspector plugin. First, we create a very general editor plugin script and configuration file. Second, we create an editor inspector plugin script and add it to the engine via the editor plugin script we just created. Finally, we use the Editor Inspector plugin script to add custom controls and properties to the editor. So to get started, we're going to head to our project, project settings, and navigate to our plugins tab. Then we'll go to the top right and click create. Then we just fill out the form. The plugin name is how it will be displayed in the plugins tab. The subfolder is the name of the subfolder within the add-ons directory. The description, author, and version are self-explanatory. And the script name should just be the name of the plugin plus .gd. Then just hit create. Now you should see your plugin listed back in the plugins tab of your project settings and it should be enabled. In the file systems tab, you should see an add-ons directory containing your plugin.gd and .cfg files. Godot should also have opened your plugin.gd script with the tool keyword at the top, extending editor plugin. Before we can do anything in here though, we have to make our editor inspector plugin script. Select file, new script, and then navigate to your plugin directory. I'm just gonna name my script inspector plugin. Then we just change the script to extend the Editor Inspector plugin class instead of the node class. Then we'll navigate back to our Editor plugin script and create a new variable called plugin that preloads our Editor Inspector plugin script. Simply click and drag the script from your plugins directory. Then in the enter tree function, we're gonna instantiate our plugin with plugin equals plugin.new and we're gonna add our plugin to the engine with the add inspector plugin built-in function. Then in exit tree, just call the remove inspector plugin function with the plugin as the argument. This will create the plugin when the project is open and remove it when the project is closed. Now we can navigate back to our editor inspector plugin script and actually start adding things to our inspector. The first function we'll need to define is the built-in virtual function can handle. This function is called every time an object is selected in the editor. If we return true, then we will add things to that object's inspector tab. To add something to the inspector of every single object in the editor, just return true. In our case though, we just want to affect control nodes. So just type return object is control. This is just a more concise way of saying if the object is a control node, then return true. Now editor inspector plugin has four functions that determine where in the inspector we're gonna add something. Parse begin, parse category, parse end, and parse property. Parse begin and parse end add things to the beginning and end of the inspector respectively. Parse category adds something to one or all of the inherited categories. Finally, parse property allows us to add something to any or all of the properties in the inspector. So we'll start with parse begin. I'll create a new label node and then capture it inside the variable label. Then I'll set the text to be example. Finally, I'll use the built-in function add custom control to add the label to the inspector. Now, in order for any of our changes to be reflected in the editor, we have to go back to the plugins tab of our project settings and disable and re-enable the plugin. Now, if I click on my test control node, I can see the example label has been inserted at the top of the inspector. As an alternative to creating our property control node via code, we can also just create a scene using Godot's built-in editor. Here, I've got a simple scene with an HBox container, which contains a label and a checkbox. To add this to our inspector, we just instantiate the scene in our editor inspector plugin script and then add it via the add custom control function. Then we disable and re-enable our plugin in the plugins tab, click on our test node, and then we can see it inserted into the inspector. If you want this to have any functionality, you of course need to add a script, but we'll be going over how to do that in a second. Now we'll cover the parse category function. We can leave the code we already have instantiating the label. Again, we'll need to disable and re-enable our plugin in the project settings to see any effect. Now, if we click on our test node, we can see the example label has been inserted under each of the inherited categories. We can specify that it's only inserted under specific categories using the category parameter of the parse category function. To insert it under the control category, I'll say if category is equal to control, then insert our label. After disabling and re-enabling our plugin, you can see that it's been inserted underneath the control category. 
Finally, we'll cover the parse property function, which is what we're going to use to make our plugin. You can see that this function comes with tons of parameters, but the documentation does not describe what they are. And of course, you can't print things in plugin scripts. To get around this, I've added a script to our testing node with the tool keyword at the top. I've also created this function underscore print, which takes an argument and then just prints it from there. Then from the editor inspector plugin, I'll call the underscore print function by doing object dot underscore print, and then I'll just put all these parameters in as an argument. Then I'll disable and re-enable the plugin and then head over to the output. You can see that this function is run once for every single property in the inspector. You can also see what each of these parameters represents, but for our purposes, we're just interested in the third parameter, which is a string of the property. Going back into the script, you can see that this parameter is called the path parameter. We'll use it just like we would in the parse category function. I'll say if path is equal to rect pivot offset, then insert this label. Now if we go look at our inspector, you can see that the example label has been inserted above the pivot offset property. Now for our keep pivot offset property, rather than using a simple control node, we're going to use Godot's editor property class. So let's create a new script by going to file, new script, and saving it in our plugin directory. I'm just going to name mine keep centered property. So here's the code for the property. As you can see, it extends the editor property class, and I've given it the class name keep centered property. You can also see that I've instanced a checkbox node, connected its toggled signal, and added it as a child in the init function. This function is very similar to the ready function, except it's called before the node enters the scene tree. Now you can see in the function where I've connected the toggled signal, I'm calling the built-in function emit changed. This takes a string of the property name and the new property value as arguments. You can also see that I call and capture the get edited object function, which returns the object we've selected in the editor. Finally, we have the built-in function update property, which is called when we select the object in the editor and every time the original property is changed. Thus, we can use this function to remember our custom property value whenever the inspector is refreshed. First, I make the simple if statement to make sure the code is run only the first time the function is called. Then I get the value of the original property and check if its value indicates that it's been changed. If it has, then I just set the custom property to reflect that. Now we'll head back to our editor inspector plugin script to add this into the inspector. Rather than using add custom control, we'll use the other built-in function add property editor. The first parameter is just the string name of the property we want to edit, so we'll just pass in the path argument from the parse property function. The second argument is what we're actually going to inject in the inspector, so I'll just make an instance of our keep centered property class. Remember that we can do this because we added the class name keyword at the top of our editor property script. Now when we check our test node after disabling and re-enabling the plugin, you can see that there is a checkbox above the pivot offset property. You can see that when the checkbox is checked, the pivot offset will stay in the center and the control rect will scale appropriately. You can also see that when it's unchecked, this doesn't happen, and when we refresh the inspector, it remembers the value of our custom property. Now for something more complex like my gamepad layout plugin, I'm constantly removing and adding things to the inspector. So I'll quickly show you how I accomplish that. In whichever node you'd like to affect, add a function underscore parse begin and add inspector plugin as a parameter. Then in our editor inspector plugin script, inside the function parse begin, we'll check if the object has the method underscore parse begin. If it does, we'll call it and pass in self as the argument. Now if we go into my gamepad layout script, I simply use the editor inspector plugins built in add custom control and add editor property functions from that node while referencing the inspector. The GitHub links for these projects are in the description in case you're interested. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please drop a like below and potentially subscribe to my channel. Also, maybe check out one of these two videos, you know, whatever floats your boat. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.